Our next caller is Becky from Minnesota. What's up, Becky? How can we help you? Hi. I'm so happy to finally get to say hi to you guys. Um, I'm just going to try to keep it short, but um, basically my question boils down to how to keep um, cardiovascular endurance um, during the off season and gain some muscle and strength. Um, just a little background. I have been a long distance runner for about the past 12 years and I love it. Um, nothing makes me happier than going um, for a long run and listening to a podcast. Um, I've done several marathons, half marathons, um, and in the past three years, I started doing um, sprint triathlons, and um, the competitive side really came out in me. Um, and I just, I really got competitive in doing them, and I love doing them. And then um, since about March, when the lockdown began, I started running about seven days a week. Um, I was running about 60 plus miles a week, um, as well as adding in biking and swimming during the summer months. Um, and due to my high endurance, my triathlon times this past year were excellent. Um, just because I had so much endurance and I was able to keep um, just putting out mileage and going for long distances. Um, but as I get older, I'm, a, I'm 39 and I'm starting to find value in rest and recovery. And I just don't know how to do that with um, other triathlon training I'm doing and running and gaining this um, wanting to gain strength strength over the off season. Okay. Good question. So Becky, what you can do is you can actually put a barbell on your back when you're doing all these exercises. <laughs> yeah. You just, no. she made me exhausted going, <laughs> I know. I'm just, I'm totally joking. Okay. I'm going to ask you a few questions that help me, help me out with advising you. Okay. So if you were to, if you were to rank your endurance training in terms of like how much you value and how much you enjoy it on a scale of one to 10, where would it be? Well, she'll say 10. A 10. Okay. A 10. Now, if, and you got to be honest, uh, strength training, uh, how much do you value it in terms of while you're doing it, enjoying it and love it on a scale of one to 10? I started out as one. Okay. Um, I'm currently probably at an, uh, as in far as liking it, I'm at a six, but seeing the results I get when I do it, I'm at like an eight to nine. Okay. How many days a week do you, do you want to exercise? Um, Seven. Okay. So you like to work out seven days a week. All right. I'm, I'm going to have you one day a week do resistance training. That's it. You're, you're okay. going to get the strength from it. It'll help protect you. The rest of the days you could do what you enjoy. And, and this is what's really important, Becky, is that you know, we don't want to get stuck in the, I want everything because that's impossible. You have to be honest and say, well, I enjoy this the most. And what I like about, this is what I think I hear from you. What I like about resistance training is how it makes my body feel, the strength, you know, the muscle while I do it, I don't enjoy it nearly as much, but I like some of the benefits. Well, you're going to get some of the benefits with one day a week of resistance training well, on the other days. You could do the other stuff. I would definitely throw in a mobility day though. I would mm. definitely do one of the endurance days. Just focus on mobility. Are we not? So I was a little confused here. So we, are we not trying to transition out of all this running and some of that? Are we, are I really like the muscle that I'm building and I feel more confident and I can feel, um, I have strength path, strength trained, um, in the uh, like the more the winter months when I'm inside, um, I try to get in two days a week of that. But I could also see that really helped my endurance this summer as far as like the biking and the swimming. My swimming time improved and my biking time. And the only thing I did was add in um, just a little bit more um, resistance training over the winter. Yeah. yeah. So I, I guess I guess what I'm asking is that uh, are are we trying to get get rid of all the the running and marathons? Are we that's something yeah, you? Just how to, to reinforce try to have it, right? balance in this off season when it's cold. I'm in Minnesota, so it's cold during the winter. Mm -hmm. I run early in the morning or later at night. It's cold, and it's just sometimes it'd be nice to just stay in the house and lift weights versus you know um, logging all the miles okay. and just building well, that strength over the winter months. I mean, you, she could do like a hybrid approach to this, right? We had we had mm -hmm. a question not that long ago where we talked to somebody kind of similar, and we were telling them that. You know, I, yes, I agree. Uh, one day a week, what Sal is saying, but let's say it's a week where it's so cold you don't go out and run and do any of your cardio all week long, and then that week you could train two or three days in there. But you have to adjust the strength training based off of how much cardio endurance type of training that you're doing, or else you're just, you're going to do too much, and then it's just it's counterproductive. So you have to be able to go. Okay, this is a week where. I'm probably not going to get out and run very much. Therefore, I can strength train full body two to three times a week. If it's a week when you're getting out and you're getting these runs in, then I'm with Sal. I would tell you just to do the one day a week. But, uh, you know, people like yourself who obviously have a competitive streak and very disciplined, 
the mistake I think they make uh, when they when they start to see some of the benefits from strength training is they try and do all of it. Mm -hmm. They try and be this super super athlete as far as endurance sports, and then they also want to get really strong. And they think that the more that they strength train in addition to all this running they're doing, that the stronger they're going to get. And there'll be a tipping point. There'll be a point where the body says, "Nah, you're just asking too much of it." And so you have to learn how to balance the two of them. And what that looks like is some weeks you're going to be one day a week of strength training, and then maybe other weeks weeks when you completely scale back on all the endurance training and it's cold and you don't want to get out and do that and you want to be inside and lift, then you could do two or three days. But I would never go beyond three days of lifting and I would always be between that one to three and I would let my endurance training dictate how much strength training. Yeah, you want to bolster your endurance training and, and reinforce your joints. One thing I would recommend, um, and I, I do love that you're considering strength training. However, I also want you to consider, you know, moving in different planes and being able to, uh, you know, do things in the frontal plane, the transverse plane. So you're twisting, you're also moving laterally. Uh, and, and this is going to be really important because of all the repetitive stress of, of you doing the same uh, type of movement going forward in the sagittal plane constantly, uh, you know, this will help to kind of build more longevity support structure around the joints, you know, avoid, you know, chronic issues in terms of pain and, uh, and, and weaknesses later on. So, you know, to incorporate that in your strength training, I highly suggest. Yeah, Becky, I'm, I'm kind of reading between the lines a little bit, and I've trained a lot of people like you. And um, in my experience, it's not going to happen until you start to enjoy it. That's why I'm saying once a week. I, I think once a week is realistic. And here's okay. what I think is going to happen. If you do it right and you don't overtrain, you'll eventually want to do more because you'll really start to enjoy that aspect of it. But f forcing yourself to do more of it just because you like the results, but you hate doing it and you love running so much, right. that tends to be a failing strategy. It tends to be right. like, a, oh, on again, off again type of strategy you love running so much so then i would say not fine. to mention the body's not going to respond the way you want if you're if you're running that's what i was wondering too is with all my endurance training i feel like maybe if i backed off that a little bit and strength train more i'd see more of course you 100 percent. of course and that's what i mean by you you need to be able to do that you need to be able to listen to sal only do one day a week because you you love your running and you're doing that but then if there's a week or two where you say, you know what, the next two weeks, I'm really going to scale back. I don't have any competitions coming up for a while, and I'm just going to focus on strength training. Nothing wrong with you going to two to three days a week, but I, I, I also wouldn't do this. I wouldn't go one day a week strength training, all of a sudden you back off all your endurance training, then all of a sudden you go seven days of strength training. That's kind of the your personality would probably naturally gravitate to that. Uh, and and you need to not do that. You don't want to do that. You're always looking to do the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. So for you, it's one day a week. And then if all of a sudden you decide to scale way back on the endurance training, then sure, give yourself two times a week, maybe three max, following like yeah. a MAPS anabolic the, protocol. Just objectively, Becky, the, the most success I ever had with the triathletes and marathon runners that I trained, and these are people that that's what they want to do. They want to do well in triathlons, they want to do well in marathons. I've trained a couple Ironman competitors. That's the priority. And we use resistance training as a way to support that. And it was once a week. We didn't do more than once a week. I would have them do mobility stuff and that would happen, you know, either before or after their runs or their swims or, you know, when they would ride. But once a week of resistance training was the best. I've tried two, three and with the amount of training that they were doing for their sport, it was just it was just too much. They would have had to back way off on their triathlon training in order to do more resistance training, but then they would have lost performance in their particular sport. So this is the trade-off. Yeah. That's why I'm saying- We'll also consider an off-season, right? Like, right, because that's what we're going into now is pretty much the off-season. Yeah, so consider the off-season as the way to reinforce and strengthen your body. And you can you can back off the volume of running and the endurance side of it to, to really hyper-focus on you know, bolstering your body, strengthening your body, building support around your joints, and then come back into the season. Every athlete needs an off season to rebuild their body. So, yeah. you know, you keep doing the same thing over and over again, inevitably you're going to run into problems. Yeah, we're going to do you have MAPS performance? Because I feel like that's that would be the best kind of resistance training program for what you're doing. I do not. No. Okay, we'll send that to you. Now it has three foundational workouts a week in there. Pick one. Pick one of them. And then the mobility sessions, I suggest you do those a few days a week. They're short. You can do it for 15 minutes, um, maybe as a warm-up or a primer before your, your endurance training. And I think you'll be good. I really think unless you cut your running and your cardio down, your endurance training down, 
more than one day a week of resistance training. I, I'm look. I'll tell you what. I'm going to bet that you're probably already a little overtraining. So well, I, I do. Um, yeah. Well, I do resistance training three days a week. I run four, and then I do spin twice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're way overtrained, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> you could definitely take a beating. I think you've proven that. But yeah, well, that, and that's cutting back. I've cut my mileage in half since um, the summer. Becky, you're a certified badass. That's what you are. So it's <laughs> it's tough when you're that badass to kind of scale back. Don't and just don't be, let the badass I, turn you into a dumbass yeah, though. Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Okay. So many miles. It's yeah. Just, it's, yeah. yeah. But right. you're getting up there in age with us, so uh, you definitely. Yeah, need- <laughs> I know. Happy fortieth, by the way. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You know, you know what's funny? The yeah. the people that do this the most, yeah, are the late thirties, early forties clients. I don't know what it is. I think it's that like. Uh, I don't know. It's just like the clients yeah. that I had that would constantly overdo it, or like in that age. This group. is starting to yeah. really inspire me to. Uh, to write a program, I feel like we get this so much right now. And I, what what I what I find us consistently advising, and it's funny, right? We're bouncing between. I where I see um, flow sessions from Hit being amazing. I see mobility sessions from Performance being amazing, and then I see foundational days either from Anabolic or Performance. So if we could build some sort of a hybrid for people that do cardio first yeah. like it'd yeah. be like the maps cardio program like so if cardio is your your endurance training is your your yep. first love how do i blend strength training and we write some sort of a program that yeah. actually i mean if we get enough people that I reach out after hearing this uh maybe we'll do something like that because i feel like we answer a lot of questions around this and giving people a, a more structured guidance on how we would do that, I think would be helpful. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's like, I, I used to do this. I used to do this in my workouts. I, I would look at my workouts and be like, you know what? I want more strength endurance. So rather than changing my workout, I would just add it to what I was currently doing. Oh, totally. And I would just add, and, oh, the sled is good. Throw it on top. Oh, plyo is good. Throw it on top. And it, your body, it doesn't work that yeah, way. It's just back off. It's just way too much. And I used to love getting clients like this because I would, I'd be an asshole and I'd get them to cut way back. Yeah. And then it would be wonderful because they'd come back and be like, I'm faster. Mm -hmm. I'm strong. What the hell's going on? I'm like, well, I told you. Yeah, no, as a trainer, you always would rather have somebody you had to pull the reins. I mean, that's just like, that's in life, right? As employees, I'd rather have the two. I'd rather have somebody I have to pull the reins back than the, somebody have to kick in than the, the guy or the girl. I got to constantly be motivating every day because yeah. that gets exhausting as a coach is trying to inspire them every day to get up and go do their session. They're the, they're just the heart. They're type A. They're type A personality and they think more means more results and it's just, it doesn't work that way. So mm -hmm. I totally get it, but uh I feel like we're getting a lot of these questions of people that have endurance Super sports, common. but then also want to build muscle. And what does that look like? Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.